There we go. There it is. Hey! Technology. Ain't it grand? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. It is Thursday, August the 9th. My name is Tom Rigsby, your host, and today I'm going to tell you to stop working. Uh, not whoever you're working for. Ask you, who are you working for? Before I get to that, uh, a couple of good mornings. Joe and Jessica, thank you both for being here this morning, bright and early. And uh, if you happen to be listening to the show on your favorite podcast catcher and you want to join in the conversation, get your name mentioned in the welcomes, then head over to 7minutesinthemorning.com and uh, be sure and leave a comment in there. Let me check. I, you know, there. We'll see if that's better. How's that? Is that better for the audio? Mr. Owen, how are you, sir? Let me tell y'all something, just, you know, quick story here. This is my first cup of coffee this morning. No, I did not wake up late. I just hadn't had coffee yet today. I've been drinking a metric ton of water, <laughs> but uh, hadn't had any coffee. So this will be interesting as I'm getting wound up today. All right, so... Abby, good morning to you as well. All right, so, quote today from Richard Branson, to succeed in business, to succeed in business, you need to be original, but you also need to understand what your customer wants. There's another great quote by Henry Ford that goes something like, if I had built what my customers wanted, I would have made faster horses. It's great to have an idea, right? And it's great to... Be innovative and bring something new to the market, but you have to make sure that there is a market for that. You know, last night was co-working night, and we are in uh, week three, I guess, of the um, the the foundations class, the Ideas Suck workshop to help you figure out whether your idea's got legs or not. And we were talking about this idea of: Do you come with the idea first? and then find the market, or do you come with the market and then find the idea, or maybe is it some hybrid of the two? I think what both of these quotes are pointing out is uh, what I have distilled down into my kind of common saying, right, is our job as business owners is to solve problems for other people at a profit. And and you can even be, look, it, even if you're in the business of you and you're working for somebody else right now, that's cool too. Your job is still solving problems for other people. So when you when I asked the question in the title about who do you work for, who are you really working for? Are you working for the benefit of the customer, for the employee, employer, or benefit of yourself? Now, as this normally plays out in, in small business, business owner type scenarios, we start making decisions about what's best for us. And we've seen this happen Time and time and time again, I had lunch earlier this week with um, someone who helps business owners sell their businesses. And and, and sh we were talking about how the longer you stay in a business, how it tends to decline, especially if you stay in past the point of your passion was the word we were talking about. But But I think what happens is in the beginning... We can get our head wrapped around this idea. Businesses that are long-term stable, right, that are 10, 20 years old, they've figured out how to solve problems for other people. The businesses that don't do that, they go out of business in a year or maybe two. They, 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 you, you can't stick around long enough if you don't solve problems for people. They don't care about you that much, right? But if you're solving problems for them, then you can stick around for a long time. So... In the beginning, they figured out how to do that. They were very responsive to customer need. They let customer demand kind of drive the path that the business took. And then at some point, mentally, they made this switch. I got to get out of this. And they stopped being responsive. They stopped being uh, letting, letting customer, demand, customer demand kind of dictate what they did. And they started making decisions based on what's best for them. And that's when the business begins to decline. Not good, not bad. It it just is what it is, right? So if we recognize this, and I really like the idea of 
of of calling that you know persisting sticking with the business beyond your point of passion because when i'm when i'm really passionate about the business i'm i'm interested i'm all in man i can just i can go gangbusters and i can do all kinds of stuff and then at some point maybe something else piques my interest maybe this business has kind of run its course and now i'm just i don't have to build it anymore it's just managing it that's what happens to me very often i I like to build i don't i don't like to maintain the status quo so whenever i can i'll build and then hire somebody else to run because i just that's that's not my favorite thing to do whatever the case may be we have to be self-aware enough to realize what's happening. So the question for you today, I, I know I put a question in the title, but the, the question today is, have you persisted beyond your point of passion? If you're, if you're working in a job, have you stuck with that job because it's safe? And I'll, I'll throw you another bonus session in here if we start talking about that. By the way, if you didn't watch yesterday's show, there's two whole shows in yesterday's show. Somebody talked me into doing an extra topic. I don't know who that was. If you're working in a job because it's safe and you kind of stayed beyond your point of interest, your point of passion, do something different. If you started a business and look, I get it. I, cause I hear it frequently. Why are you stopping? Why are you? <clears throat> Why are you selling? Why are you closing that business? It's doing so well. I'm not interested anymore. It can't. It's not. It's not maintaining my interest. So that's where I came up with this pattern of, of hiring somebody else. So whatever the case may be, right? Whether you're an employee, whether you're a business owner, or whether you're starting a business, maybe you have a business and you're starting a new product line. Be self-aware enough to recognize where your point of passion ends. And if you are on the beginning side, if you're on the uphill side of this, awesome. Because think now about what you want to do when that happens. Right? In my example, if I waited until I was past the point of passion, would I make the best hiring decisions to hire somebody to run it? Mm, Probably not. Right? But And it gives me... Well, we'll get into that later. It gives me great opportunities when I hire them early. If that's what you want to do, if you want to sell it, be sure and make decisions organizationally, structurally that allow you to package it to sell it. Whatever, just just be aware, right? Be self-aware enough to know where your point of passion is. And then if you haven't gotten there yet, what are you going to do when you get there? If you have gotten there, what are you going to do today to change that? things moving over here by themselves <laughs> all right i'm gonna wrap it up uh today with that where's your point of passion what are you gonna do when you get there if you've already been there what are you gonna do to change it all right today is thursday you know what that makes tomorrow free coaching friday if you have a question a topic or something that you would like for me to tackle you want to try and stump the coach great i invite you to try Leave me a comment down here or send me a private message or even send me an email, tom at tomrigsby.com. All of the above will get to me. I will take on your topics in the morning, bright and early, 7 o'clock, right here, 7 minutes in the morning. Until then, you guys have a fantastic Thursday. It's Thursday, thankful Thursday. Have a thankful Thursday. Oh, And I'll talk to you in the morning. Take care.